Uh, good evening, guys. My name is Adam Johnson. Um, I teach math and accelerated literacy at Visitation Valley Falcons. Hi, my name is Valerie Kuki, and I've been a Falcon for 10 plus years, um, teaching mostly language arts, but now I'm accelerated literacy teacher. My name is Joe Trust, and this is my third year as principal at Visitation Valley Middle School. My name is Rashad Nasour, also literacy instructor, and uh, also doing the African American Male Achievement Program. So I'm Saxon here. I teach science and accelerated literature, and it's my first year here. Um, here at Visitation Valley, we not only empower readers, but we take flight. Um, Visitation Valley Middle School is located at the edge of the Sunnydale Public Housing Complex in the southeastern quadrant of San Francisco. Um, Visitation Valley Middle School, our mission is to provide a quality education that prepares students for fulfilling a life in global society. Um, historically, many students of color, students from low income backgrounds and new immigrants have not fully been served by our educational system. And here at Visitation Valley, we seek to interrupt and empower our students to realize their dreams. Um, although literacy has been a focus of Visitation Valley, we still struggle. And unfortunately, reading and literacy for teens can mean to the difference between a successful life and a life of hardships and struggles. If you look at the image right here, um, reading is literally leading to the incarceration of a large percentage of our population. 85% um, of juveniles who interface with the juvenile court system are functionally illiterate. More than 60% of all prison inmates are functionally illiterate. And a really huge one is that 70% of inmates in America's prisons cannot read above a fourth grade level. So you can sort of see where literacy plays into the situation. 50% of SFUSD students in K through eight are not proficient at reading. That's half. Um, so uh, in my 10 years, I've noticed as time passes, struggling readers in first grade will still be struggling as they advance in grades with them falling further and further away from their peers who are reading at grade level. Uh, this achievement gap is striking at Visitation Valley. 75 to 80 percent of the students are reading below grade level, with 25 percent, even though it's a middle school, reading at first grade and second grade level, 25 percent at third grade level, 25 percent at fourth grade level, or f and fifth. So who are our students, Mr. Chess? Um, so, you know, we have the pleasure of serving a pre predominant group of students of color, which means that we're, we don't have a small group that we're trying to uh, uh, address, but it's pretty much all our students, uh, mainly African-American students, Pacific Islander students, Chinese students, and Latino students, and many students new to the country. Um, so we know that the district is concerned with making change, and there's 10 big shifts that the district wants schools to do, three of which apply to our design challenge, personalizing pathways for kids, redesigning space and time, and then also blending learning between technology and the teacher. Um, for our design challenge, um, our challenge is how might we create environments and routines that empower our target students to be confident, motivated, and independent readers? All right, our design process, we got a lot of our information from our students, which is our stakeholders. And so uh, we did a student fishbowl survey, um, also a classroom inventory checklist, and we also did research. Uh, insight, students, they want comfortable seating. They're complaining about the seats they have, so comfortable seating is a big deal. Um, students want choice and activity, reading materials, and also reading modality. Um, and students are encouraged by peer recognition. Uh, design process, innovation, teamwork. So we share data amongst each other, uh, monthly team meetings, um, co-planning and collaborating, lesson planning and research, and uh, we also get train training by a reading specialist. Ideas and prototype. So the goal is to redesign the classroom for independent and empowered readers. With that said, we have a few design strategies that we would like to uh, touch upon. Uh, design feature number one, choice of seating. Design feature number two, modality, which I'll explain in the next two slides. And then uh, our third feature is uh, choice of theme. 
what we mean by uh, choice of seating is, again, Mr. Nosor has spoken what the students have asked. They want comfortable seating. They want to have the choice of picking their own reading environment that they can be comfortable and they welcome themselves. Having some flexible form of seatings will encourage them to have a, a, um, a learning environment. And that's one of our asks. Uh, our second one is modality. What we mean by modality is the ability to have multiple form of reading, such as through a laptop, uh, audio books, Kindle, and our classic books. And then the design, uh, the choice of a genre. We want them to have the ability to figure out what type of genre they like to read and want to read. Um, so there, again, at the end of the day, it's their choice of what they want to do, read, pick their own environment, pick their own seating, and that, that's our goal, encouraging them to be more uh, empowering about their choices of reading. Uh, and we hope to uh, roll this out in February through May with uh, this amazing team of Accelerated Literature teachers. Uh, we hope to also see some increase in our SRI scores and continue the reading stamina. Why should we be funded? Why is it an innovation? Well, we feel like the achievement gap hasn't really specifically been addressed. We're hoping that our updated furniture and materials will help to address that. Um, new classroom libraries and leveled books um, will also help that. For our outcomes for short term, term, we're hoping it would reduce the stress of our students, especially in their other content areas, um, increase their freedom of choice, and increase their reading score. Um, long term, again, increased reading stamina. How long can they read at one time? Hopefully 30 plus minutes without losing focus. Empowerment through literacy. Stop the school to prison pipeline. Uh, lastly, improved access to academic content, which leads to employment opportunity. Um, our measures, um, we have done some qualitative and uh, quantitative and qualitative. SRI test scores, accelerated literacy questionnaires, fishbowl, accelerated literacy survey, and feedback from the content teachers. After just 12 weeks, 45% of students have already increased their reading scores, some up to 100 points. You could see the purple is the gains. That's just one class. Um, our goal is um, right now we have 21 proficient in reading, and we're hoping to double that um, and by the end of the year have 42% um, proficient. So I want to say a little bit about the context of how we got here. So what we notice about the data is that the same kids who are getting in trouble, right, who are like on the list of always getting in trouble, sent out of class, suspended, referred out of class, are the same group of students who score low on the SBAC. And a lot of times we focus on that SBAC and there's all this push to like raise those, those test scores and that's in the news. What isn't really talked about is literacy. When we looked at all those numbers, we saw all of those kids were not just not proficient, but the farthest below in reading. So we decided that we were gonna address that, right? It's not the sexiest idea. It's not on the news, right? It's not being pushed by the district at large, but that we determined that to be the, the limiting agent, right? The foundational thing that is not really addressed in middle school and definitely not, not addressed in many high schools, which is why we we're trying to prevent this idea of this school to prison pipeline, starting with something foundational. Um, our phase in plan, we're going to start in February. We're going to continue meeting monthly. We're going to drop some blueprints for our classrooms, order items, new furniture, get feedback from students, see what they think, change it up some more, and start replacing the old with the new. Um, budget wise, we want to buy flexible seating, books and materials for our library, technology, and subscriptions for options for kids. Um, we got a couple donations from Salesforce and books from our library already. The ask, $20,000 so we can do those things. Um, in kind, we want to get some, some guidance from, from the iLab so we can figure out what really is innovative for kids and some training so that we can really become specialists to do intervention for our students. Uh, so to leave you with our last thing is we, we, started, we, we started with the old classroom and we'll scroll around that and pass out some, uh, some viewfinder three-dimensional videos for you. And then we redesigned one of our new classes with pulling pieces from different classrooms around the building to kind of come up with what do we want it to look like um, and test it out with some students. So if you kind of look through the, the cardboard viewers or if you look up here, you can see what it used to look like, which we know many of our classrooms still look like that, and what we're going for, right? So you see a, a little U of students sitting around, some kids on iPads, some kids on computers, some kids on uh, Chromebooks. 
some kids do an audio book, some kids sitting in the corner in our soft seating with some sofas, some kids in the center, some kids in the back with a little cafe, a little feel. We want it to feel different, right? I mean, class should feel like a cafe. It should feel like something that's comfortable. It shouldn't feel like a sterile environment, which many of our places still feel like. actually like they want to be there um, and then when students want to be there they want to read more and it's magic because when you read more your scores improve it's as it's as simple as that it's one of those it's like riding a bike it's it's not complicated um, I'm gonna continue my scan all right and you know with that I'll leave you with you know what would it be like if our classes look like that you know what would our scores be like what would our discipline look like what would our SBAC scores look like and to, to Mr. Johnson's point would kids be excited to come to school Right, and that's what we're going for. So thank you, have a good evening. <laughs>